Ladies and gentlemen, please give a warm welcome to Mark and Julie Levin. Kiss. Hello. Wow. <laughs> what do you think? We're meek in Scarborough? No. Oh, God forbid. Good morning, CPAC. It is so great to be here. It is packed. We won't talk about the 26 million people who are watching by whatever. Um, so it's great to be here. We're so excited to see our magnificent president and hear him speak. But let's jump right in because time goes super quickly. So before we start talking about the US elections, I want to hit very quickly on Israel because the elections for prime minister are in two days. And we had the opportunity to be in Israel and to speak to Prime Minister Netanyahu. We got, actually, we got back earlier this week. It's hard to believe. And you know the Prime Minister, the conversation it was on life, liberty, and Levin. Hopefully everybody watched last weekend. Excellent, perfect. So you talked about the peace plan and you talked about the elections. Very quickly, tell us what the implications would be for a BB win and loss on our country, what the impact would be. And not only that, there's a public persona people have of him. You have insight really on who he is as a person. So take it away. First of all, can we thank the President of the United States for supporting the State of Israel? In so many ways, Donald Trump is an exceptional, not just president, but human being. They tell him he can't do something, and he does it. Exactly. Um, a mission. The answer is, you know, it's a funny thing about democracies and republics, and parliaments. After World War II, what did the British do? They voted Churchill out of office. Insane. What else did the British do? Well, Thatcher's party stabbed her in the back, and they threw her out of office for John Major, who was a joke. Um, and now you look at Israel. You have the strongest prime minister in the history of that country who works very closely with our president, who stares down the Iranians, the Syrians, the Palestinians, who's brought enormous prosperity to that country. And what do they want to do? Put them in prison. Put them in prison if they possibly can. And what's the lesson here? The left is diabolical. Whether it's in America, whether it's in Israel, whether it's in Britain, the left is the same. The left is diabolical. You have Bernie Sanders and other reprobates going around this country telling you they believe in democracy. How do you believe in democracy when you want to centralize all power in the government? They believe in one election, their election. We had an election. We elected one of the greatest presidents in American history. And what do they seek to do? What do they seek to do? Remove him. Cripple him. Well, the same thing goes on in Israel. And by the way, if you think our media is bad, and our media sucks, if you think... Say if you hello. Think, They're here somewhere. Hi. Big deal. If you, <laughs> if you think our media is bad, you ought to see it over there. It's absolutely disastrous. What was your question? My question was... I think okay. Benjamin Netanyahu, and I've met our president, and our president's one of the greatest men I've ever met, and Benjamin Netanyahu's one of the greatest men I've ever met, too. And my fingers are crossed, and I pray that the Israeli people vote and put him and keep him in power. Otherwise, they're going to suffer. Two days. Your prayers for BB, please. Okay, let's move to the U.S. elections, but before we start talking candidate names, you oh, and I... It smells good, like a hamburger or something. Am I the only one that smells that? No, we do. We can smell it. My God, I'm always thinking of food. <laughs> Go ahead, I'm sorry. Okay, focus. So, <laughs> before we talk about U.S. elections, 
well, you and I talk a lot about what's happening to our society. And the fact is that the left, for almost a century, has done every single thing it can to break down the civil society. So in universities, K through 12, they're teaching our young people to hate America. We're racist, we're xenophobic, they don't like family. To me, though, one of the biggest dangers is their attack and their assault on faith. Because if you don't have faith, and you don't believe in a creator, then you don't believe that you get your inalienable and God-given rights from God. Once you have that gone, what's left? The left wants the government to control See, who you I, are. Everything what you I know, I learned from her. Exactly. You know? So this is the problem, right? If, if, if faith is done away with, then everybody is supposed to turn to the government for what they have. I want you to talk about that, and I want you also to just hit on virtue, because you right. say that nobody talks about virtue. When is the last time at these Democrat debates they ever talked about the Declaration of Independence, the Constitution of the United States? When's the last time they used the word liberty and individualism and private property rights? You understand, you do, that this is the basis for our nation. Anybody can create a totalitarian, centralized, bureaucratic, overbearing, devouring regime. Every little nutjob dictator in the third world does that. And that's where Bernie Sanders is. We're going to talk about him in a minute. What is this democratic socialism? How do you have democratic socialism when socialists hate Democracy. You get one vote, they get in power, then they destroy everything. Now, how many more examples of democratic socialism do we need? How many more backwards, repressive, depraved societies do we need to create? How many more human guinea pigs do there need to be? From China, from the old Soviet Union, to Zimbabwe, to Venezuela, to Cuba, to California. How many more do we need? Bernie Sanders, don't get me started. Bernie okay, Sanders. I won't get you started. Bernie Sanders is an old red. He's a throwback. He's an old Brooklyn communist. What does he do? What does he do? He moves to Vermont. He moves to Vermont. He gets elected to a, a, a what? Burlington, Vermont. What are they? Twelve people something? there. Mayor. Mayor. Yeah. yeah. Uh, then he gets elected to the House. Then he gets elected to the Senate. He's accomplished absolutely nothing, thank God. And what does he want to do? Nationalize, nationalize, free this, free that. This guy's never run a 7-Eleven. Never but, run a 7-Eleven. But he has two homes. Well, actually, he has three, but he calls one a summer camp, right? So that makes it OK. So perfect segue. We didn't even rehearse this, by the way. He has no idea what my questions minutes, were, so, yeah. OK? He really had no idea what my questions were. Bernie Sanders may actually be. Just remember his initials. B. S. <laughs> You stole my line. See how much we think alike. It's unbelievable to think that this man, who is a Marxist, would be the nominee for the Democrat Party. A lot of people are very excited about that because they think our president can crush him. And he could crush him. But isn't there a bigger concern here that in the United States of America, this shining nation, the city on the hill, we would actually have a Marxist who could be the president? Okay. First of all, you're not allowed to call him a Marxist. If you notice how they control the language, he's a democratic socialist. Oh, okay, then he must be okay. No, he's not okay. He's a Marxist. He's been a Marxist. He'll always be a Marxist. That's number one. Number two. The Democrat Party, like it or not, is the biggest political party in America. Can you imagine the Democrat Party nominating a Marxist for president of the United States? Now, this has been a slow burn. They've been building to this moment. But if you're a conservative, a constitutionalist, this has to concern you. We need to crush Bernie Sanders. We need to crush his little Marxist army. We need to defeat them on the battlefield of politics. 
When people say, oh, the Democratic establishment's yeah. trying to defeat him, I say, well, defeat him. It's okay. Wouldn't you rather have moderates in the Democrat Party than insane Soviet Marxists running for president of the United States, for God's sakes? We need to defeat these people every step of the way. And by the way, this idea that Klobuchar is a moderate and Buttigieg is a moderate, they and want even to get Biden. Biden's. He's well, Biden's. not moderate. He's not awake. Let's be honest. Let's In the be lunch honest. Bucket? Media, get ready. Let's be honest. I see a padded room in that guy's future. <laughs> it's just me. I make no judgment. With all due respect. Is that with or without his lunch bucket? Without his lunch bucket. Without his lunch bucket. Take all the sharp objects away. But anyway, here's the thing. I mean, anyway. I mean, so when you look at the lineup of the Democrat Party, there's not a moderate among them. You want to abolish the Electoral College. They believe in open borders. Can I say something about our health care system? It's the greatest health care system Bravo. on the face of the earth. It is. And to the extent to the extent it's too expensive, you can thank mother government that drives up the costs, that eliminates competition. You want to fix the health care system? We ought to have a thousand insurance companies. We ought to have a thousand health care plans. We ought to have a thousand times more doctors and nurses. It's called competition. It's called capitalism. And, and the coronavirus, the coronavirus vaccine will not be discovered in Venezuela. It will not be discovered in the Scandinavian countries. It will not be discovered in some backwards third world country. It will be discovered in one of our pharmaceutical labs in a capitalist country. Right. That's where it'll be found. Exactly. Where did this virus come from? China. China. The Democrats used to praise China. Tom Friedman and his 400 Pulitzer Prizes over there at the New York Times. Oh, it's an autocracy, but they know how to get things done. They sure as hell do. They got the best gulag system on the face of the earth. <laughs> they put down our country. I have a challenge to Bernie Sanders and all the other Democrats running. How about a one-hour speech? Will you praise America? Will you praise Americans? Will you praise free enterprise? Will you praise the things that we do in this country? Mike Bloomberg loves China. Next question. Next question. <laughs> well then, and Big Pharma, by the way, is our best friend potentially, right? Because that's where. I, I love the way it's big pharma, right. it's big oil, it's big, whatever it's big, they big, hate. Exactly. Big this, yes. with their big mouths and their big government <laughs> and their big bureaucracy and their big taxes and their big regulations. You know who the real robber barons are? It's them. They want to steal our money. They want to steal our wealth. They want to redistribute. Here's the thing. You look at a guy like Bernie Sanders. Bernie Sanders couldn't run a hot dog stand. But you do love hot dogs. I do love you hot do dogs. You love it. Bernie Sanders couldn't run a hot dog stand. But listen to this guy. He knows how to run the energy industry. He knows how to run the healthcare industry, the housing industry, the finance industry. His wife knows how to run colleges. She does. <laughs> <clears throat> right into the ground. And yet we actually have, here's the, here's the poison of Marxism and socialism. It's so diabolical, it's so alluring, that people are prepared to surrender their liberty for nothing, to demagogues. I have callers call into my show, I say, why do you support Bernie Sanders? And they want to talk about the East Indian Company. You Remember the British East Indian? Mm -hmm. Of course you don't. Who the hell remembers that stuff? <laughs> they bring up the East Indian Company, uh, the top 1%. Why do we care about the top 1% or the top 10%? Isn't that going to affect our lives? I got a caller who says to me last night, I'm unemployed. I said, well, get off your ass and get a job. <laughs> yeah, because 
Under our, wait, wait, under our president, more than seven million, million jobs have been created. And he says, what about the top 1%? I said, who cares about the top 1%? Then he says, and why should I get a job? And you know what I said? Get off my phone, you jerk. Okay. Because these are the people. Wait, wait, wait. Honey, these are the people that are gonna cancel out our vote. The Bernie Sanders agenda subsidizes people who lie in bed all damn day and want free stuff. And I don't intend to pay for that guy lying in bed all damn day. And watch this, sorry. The coronavirus. The Democrats have a plan, you know what it is? Open borders. They have another plan, you know what it is? Healthcare for the world. That won't kill the healthcare system. They have another plan for the coronavirus. Sanctuary cities, so we don't even know who's here and we can't even vet them. They have another plan for the coronavirus. Trash the President of the United States and everything he does. What is the Democrat plan to deal with the coronavirus? There is no plan. You know what they were doing when the coronavirus broke out? Impeachment trial against our president. And you know what happens when you have an impeachment trial? Those senators who never shut the hell up have to sit in their chairs and shut the hell up. They can't have a hearing. They can't propose budgets. They can't do anything week after week. And you know what? they'd still be having the trial with their witnesses. Oh, we have to have John Bolton, and we have to have McGahn, and we'd still be having trials. They effectively shut down the United States Congress while this virus was spreading, and then they dared to ta point to the President of the United States and say, uh, what is he doing? Okay, okay, I, I gotta jump in here. I have to jump in because I have to share with 30 million of our closest friends here, what my daydream is. My daydream is... Me. You're in it. However, however... Isn't she great? Picture a Democrat debate where instead of there being four members of the media, which are really the same thing as saying four members of the Democrat Party, asking questions instead to the, to the candidates, instead it's Mark Levin. So here's what we're going to do. Here's what we're going to do. Because this, to me, this to me would be perfect. We're going to do the lightning round. Uh-oh. Just, I've just... I don't know anything about it. I've just it. coined this up, okay? So we've got... Better be lightning. We have two and a half I know, minutes. I know. So I'm going to name a candidate, and I want a, que a unique question, not the same one for each candidate. You're going to tell me what your one question would be for each candidate. Okay? Go. Let's start with Amy Klobuchar. Why are you running for president? <laughs> what the hell have you done? Okay, got to move who, on. Who the hell are you? <laughs> Next one. Next one, Joe Biden. Joe Biden? What time is it, Joe? <laughs> Four letters, J-O-E, go. <laughs> Elizabeth Warren. Elizabeth Warren. Boy, is there a bigger idiot? I mean, with all due respect, Elizabeth Warren. Elizabeth Warren, my question to Elizabeth Warren, it's too obvious, of course. We know you're not a Cherokee. So what tribe exactly did you belong to? Okay, next up. Our latest and greatest entrant to the Democrat field, Mayor Mike. Mayor Mike? Mayor Mike was a Democrat, a Republican, an Independent, a Republican, and a Democrat. Did you know this? You get dizzy. And he loves this guy Xi in China. Loves it. It's not a dictatorship. It's good. If it were a dictatorship, they'd overthrow him. Uh, it's hard to overthrow dictatorships, Mike. <laughs> Mike is an oligarch. 
they're billionaires and they're billionaires. They're billionaires who love our country, who understand our country. Mike is an oligarch. Does anybody even know how he's made his billions? He runs Bloomberg News. All these media companies are going broke. This guy's worth $50 billion. I'm saying, what did, what did Mike Bloomberg create that's $50 billion? You know what? Maybe we ought to take money away from billionaires. Not that I'm thinking about it. Well, that could have been one Certain of billionaires. That could, one, that could have been one of your questions for him, right? OK. Well, I, the other thing I'd ask, Mike, are you 5'2 or 5'3? Everybody wants to know. <laughs> All right, sticking on the mayor theme, let's move to Mayor Pete. Mayor Pete. You can pronounce his last name. I know you can. I'd say, and I speak as a hair-challenged American. What's with your hair? What is with that third grade thing you're doing, like Chuck Todd with your hair? Honest to God, I look at the guy, I don't even hear what he's saying. I want to know what's with his hair. That's it. What else am I going to ask the guy? He's never done anything. He ran his little city into the toilet. I don't know what else he's done. Does anybody here know what else he's done? OK, two last. We got two left in no time. We're out of time. One, Steyer. Steyer. Go ahead. You're an ass. That's not a question. Are you an ass? <laughs> <laughs> OK. Bernie, Bernie, B Mr. BS. Mr. BS, what's your last one for him? Ernie, aren't you running for president of the wrong country? Exactly. That's it.